Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark wants to give a big shout out to all the truckers that listen to our show. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the world paranormal news with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. Talk Radio Network News. I'm James Creechbaum, and here's a report of a Fayetteville Mothman. One night I mustered the courage to go to, to my bedroom window and look out the to the backyard. A beam crossed from the shadows of the house side across the yard and into the floodlight lit area just a little bit. Stopped and looked over its shoulder at me and at an upward angle as I was in an elevated position from my window looking down at it. First, this thing was eight to nine feet tall, had its giant wings pulled in across its back so that it looked like a cloak. It looked straight ahead again and seemed to glide across the yard in a standing position. It did not have traditional legs, and the legs came together into a very strange point, as though its stance could not support its mass, yet they did. It used no stride, and it was not human. The uh, Loveland frog may have returned to Ohio. Um, I bought a little house down by the Loveland Castle Museum. Now, one night, however, I woke hearing a weird sound just outside our bedroom window on the first floor. It faced out to the back of the house, and I was puzzled as to what it could be because it sounded like a man breathing heavy, heavily. I started to sit up and realize that whatever it was, it was looking in my window just inches from my head. And I was terrified. I did not look out because I knew that it would see it. I would see it, and I kept feeling something urging me to look. We often would hear squeaking noises, screeching, not like an owl and not not like a crying baby. I woke my husband up, and he said whatever it was, it would have had to be 10 feet tall to look in our window. I couldn't sleep that night, but whatever had been there had moved on. I didn't mention it to the kids the next day. The boys came up from the basement shaken from seeing the red glowing eyes the night before. They were every bit as big as red road reflectors, and they heard heavy breathing, and the hair on their bodies stood up on end. Now, let's see here. Here's another uh, trucker report. My friend and I stopped at some shady truck stop off of Interstate 37 going towards Corpus Christi, Texas. He fell asleep as usual, and I'm not going to lie, I was about to pass out myself. I finally decided to pull over, and I fell asleep when a little while later, we heard a loud bang on the side of the cab. That startled us. We woke up immediately to find this big, lizard-like creature with red glowing eyes and sharp-looking teeth looking back at us. No, it wasn't the creature from the movie Jeepers Creepers either. And you don't have to believe me, but we both know what we saw that night. It stood there, and I don't know how many minutes just looking at us. Nothing else. After that, it flew over the cab and took off into the dark of the night. Well, reporter... Keeps asking politicians about UFOs. Damon Steer has quizzed many of the United States' most prominent politicians about the phenomena. Over the years, many presidential candidates and other senior political figures in the U.S. government have spoken openly about UFOs and offered their own views on the possibilities of alien life. Now, journalist Damon Steer who writes for a local New Hampshire newspaper, is one of an increasing number of reporters who have been repeatedly pressing for answers on the subject. There is a monument in Georgia which gives instructions in eight languages on how to rebuild society after an unknown apocalyptic event, whilst also functioning as a compass, calendar, 
and a clock. Most of you will remember the death of 12-year-old Heather O'Rourke from the Poltergeist movies. What I'm about to tell you is a true story told on a TV interview by her mother, Kathy. Heather died on the operating table while her mother waited in the waiting room. Suddenly, she saw Heather walking towards her in her hospital gown. Kathy asked her, Heather, what are you doing out here? Heather told her mother, I'm not coming back. Kathy watched her turn the corner and disappear. Just then, the surgeon came out and told Kathy that Heather didn't make it. Kathy had seen Heather's spirit, and that was the last she had seen of her. Next news break, top of the hour. Good evening, or morning, depending on your time zone. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide, get yourself a cup of java and find a comfy, easy chair. And get ready for Gary and his guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio after dark. And now... Here's Gary. And here I am. Right now, I'm trying to get Joe on the phone so we can have a conversation, well, about cryptics and all that stuff. So we should have him on the line right now. Hey, Joe, how you doing? I think we just lost him. Okay, let's see. Are you there, Joe? No, we lost him. Gee, that's what I hate about Skype. We'll try it again. So... Anyway, well, Taylor, leave your name and your number slowly, and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks. Okay, we got an answer. At the machine. tone, please record your message. So we'll give it a minute. We'll give it a try again. Well, interesting. Ah, that always happens, doesn't it, uh, James? Yeah, it seems like it. Skype's got its own. It's got its own personality. That's for sure. Yeah, it sure does. Sometimes it it does. We'll give it a try again here, and see if we can get them on. And uh, we'll give it a try. Okay. And let's see. Hey, Joe, are you okay. there? Hello? Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're, uh, you're like a broken uh, speaker. Okay, I'm still breaking up? No, that's good right there. That's good. Okay, well, I'm, I am. My wife said I kind of talk like a broken record sometimes. <laughs> well... Over and that over. no record at all. Yeah, so you're in Arizona. What part of Arizona are you in right now? We're, we're right at the New Mexico border. At We're at Springfield. And tomorrow we're planning to go to check out uh, the UFO Museum there in Roswell on our way back to Crosbyton with the pickup loaded down with this Mastodon, which is totally petrified from Florida. Oh, wow. How big are... Uh, how much of it do you have? Well, we don't really know. <clears throat> He's got enough of the lower jaws and the skull and the tusks to be worth restoring. There's, but there's a whole pickup load of bones. So what we do is we get them there and uh, start sorting them all out, try to uh, get together all the parts that belong to each other. They, they, these uh, Florida bones, I, I guess they dig them up with, they're getting shells and, and gravel, and they hit these mastodons and horses and all kinds of stuff down there and they get broken up but somebody will stop and they'll collect a bunch of it and that's kind of what this one is but he's got the this one has four tusks two in it, uh, the skull and two in the lower jaw so oh. it's a four tusk mastodon how big a skull was it <laughs> it's as big as uh oh it's probably 26 inches long by 25 inch, 20 inches wide by about uh, 26 inches deep with the lower jaws, 30, 30 inches. It's it's bigger than a modern elephant by far. Okay, so the thing would have been bigger than a, a, a elephant that we're used to seeing. Yeah, the African elephant's the biggest thing today. And this is quite a lot larger than, than they are. And we don't even know if it's a male or a female because the bones are all broken up. Actually, the skull is a lot of the skull there. It's a really beautiful blue and black color with some white inclusions. Really, really beautiful bone, and, and it's totally turned to stone. A lot of these bones, the horse leg bones uh -huh. from Florida, you can drive nails with them. They're so hard. 
Now, where did they find this at? It was, uh, I don't know the exact town. He's got all the records on it, but it was in, uh, I guess, uh, they, they have these shell pits there that are full of shells. And uh, uh, maybe they were drilling, I don't know, maybe they were, might have been digging for a uh, development or something like that. Sometimes they'll hit them like that. But they are all over Florida on all those beaches and, and all of the tributaries, the creeks. All of them. If you go down the bottom, you start screening, you'll find shark's teeth, and mammoth, mastodon bones, horse bones, camel bones, dugong, uh, saber-toothed cats, uh, the whole bunch. And um, they're just in there under the banks. You know, if you, if you dug back every bank of all those creeks in Florida, you'd have millions of, of fossils, millions. Interesting. So most of these are found by... Uh, divers and scuba gear, but the other, you know, these in this case is found, I guess, by a backhoe digging something. So either way, fortunately, they stopped and let the guy collect the rest of it. So it's up to us now to figure out what's there and then restore it. <clears throat> yeah. Now, hey, James, do you got a couple questions to ask him? Yeah, the, um, sure. The uh, Master Don. I, I'm fascinated with those. Do you think someday that we're getting closer to, you know, cloning that? Well, you know, the, the Bernie tree mastodon that I worked on uh, had its intestines were intact. And if they would have known what they had, you know, the guys dig it out were just did, didn't really know. They might have, there might have been some uh, integument there around the tusk, I mean, around the, 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 uh, the nose of the animal, the back of the head. Uh, but those bones, you know, they're not petrified. They're just stained brown. Um, and they, um, you know, here a while back, a plumber, Professor Plumber said to me, he was up in, I think it was uh, Wyoming, maybe Montana, somewhere up there. They were digging a big, uh, I guess, a big drainage line and hit a, a wet spot of a, uh, I guess it was like a peat bog sort of thing and pulled up a mammoth body with the skin, the muscle, everything on it. Uh, where did it go? He didn't know. He was just a plumber. But somebody took that thing somewhere. Well, you know, there's bound to be uh, a viable DNA in that thing because they get viable DNA uh, out of um, uh, Neanderthals, you know, people that live in caves. And, in uh, fact, they're finding uh, soft tissue now in... Uh